This afternoon I'm going to present a review on drug discovery in the P53 pathway. Uh, so this is a very active area of research at the moment. And uh, what's happening is that P53 has been known about for 30 years, um, but still no real clinical consequence of realizing that this is a common mutational event in so many tumors. But in the last uh, couple of years, a whole series of drug development programs have really come out of analysis of the whole pathway. So there are a number of clinical trials going on now. Some molecules designed to um, reactivate mutant P53 and restore its wild type function. And then a whole slew of molecules really that are designed to activate the P53 pathway in those half of tumors where it's been inactivated but not by mutation in the gene itself. And so loss of the ARF tumor suppressor or expression of uh, the HPV6 protein. So a lot of interesting molecules coming through. Well, the main things really will be to survey the field and to talk about the different strategies we have to use if P53 is mutant or wild type, and then to review um, some of the active molecules and how they work. And then I've done rather a general discussion about toxicity. I mean, if we do get these drugs, what kind of side effects would we expect? Um, and there's some very interesting ideas coming through. I mean, one concept is that you, if the tumor lacks P53 uh, and you have a drug that causes a, a P53-dependent cell cycle arrest, that you could essentially protect normal tissue by putting them into a reversible arrest. So you could treat with a chemotherapeutic drug but avoid hair loss, bone marrow suppression, um, mucositis, all of these bad side effects. And, and the tumor cell, because it would lack P53, would, would not respond to this arrest, would still be susceptible to the chemotherapeutic drug. So there's some pretty exciting preclinical work at these kinds of ideas. So it's become a very sort of interesting topic. Well, interestingly enough, you know, these things are, are really quite available. There's one or two molecules already out there that um, we would simply be using in a different way. So I, I, I think we may start to see these things happening within the next couple of years. There's one molecule that Johnson Johnson have that's already in the clinic, and there's a couple of others coming through. So, yeah, it's interesting. But I think the combination is, uh, is one of the most challenging. It's this concept of, if you like, of synthetic lethality. How can we exploit and differences in, in the genetic makeup of cancer cells from normal cells. So we've heard um, about the PARP inhibitors being great drugs to treat tumors that have BRCA mutations in breast and ovarian cancer. We'd like the same sort of concept for P53. Is there a drug that will kill cells that lack P53 function? Well, I mean, it's a vast portfolio at CRUK. I'm the chief scientist now there. We spend 300 million a year, and so we have a, a lot of different programs going on. I guess there's been a big move towards translational research, as there has been in other organizations, and uh, the charity is particularly proud of, in fact, what I talked about earlier, its role in the PARP inhibitor story is very strong. Of course, abiterone, which is coming through for prostate cancer, is a, is a CRUK program, and uh, temozolomide, a CRUK drug, just its sales just exceeded a billion. So I think it's a charity that has a good track record for bringing things through all the way from basic research through to the clinic.